Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Talk Cars. Now, what's Talk Cars all about? Well, Talk Cars is a kind of a car show that we've, we're doing at uh, Dream Car Garage whereby we combine some of the best stories or the best new car introduces from, from the, over the course of the month. So we're going to be looking at some of the, the big car channels and the big car magazines, Auto Express, Auto Car, Auto Trader, Evo, Evo Magazine, uh, Motor Trend, looking at some of the things from America as well, to see which cars have caught my attention in particular. Uh, maybe we'll have a little bit of a conversation about them, what, what I think, what, what else is available. So, straight off, let's get straight into it. Uh, made a few notes and uh, looking at some of the cars that have really interested me over the course of the month. Uh, the first car I want, I want to look at is the Mercedes S-Class Coupe. And that's something that's, that's been showing for a couple of months, but it's sort of out on the road now. Absolutely beautiful looking car. Beautiful interior, uh, beautiful exterior. I really like the direction that Mercedes are taking um, their cars now. All their cars to me now are good looking, look good looking cars, with the exception maybe of the E-Class, which looks a little bit slab-sided. But with the exception of that one car, I think they're, they're making some really good looking cars right now. So, so we're looking at about a, a, a big luxury coupe, uh, round about hundred grand. Maybe a little bit cheaper. You can get probably you could probably spec it up to a million pounds if you, if you wanted to. It's going to come with some amazing tech as all new um, big Mercedes do. But just to just think of it in terms of a a massive luxury status symbol. So beautiful car, like it a lot. One of my one of my favourite new cars out at the moment. But it just got me thinking. So if you're in a market for hundred grand plus cars, 100, 150, what else would, would be available? So. I'm going to be looking at uh, a few choices that you have uh, if you've got that kind of money to play with. So, just thinking about it now, uh, what, you, I've listed 10 cars that you could also get if you were in a market for a 100 grand plus coupe or coupe type car. So the first one up there, I put the BMW M6. Again, not a raw a raw car like a, a 911. That's why. That's why. That's not really one of my choices for this. But it's a. It's kind of a big, uh, a big coupe, a big touring coupe, um, around about eighty or thousand pounds. So you have a bit of change out of that. So one choice: BMW M6. What you're gonna get? A nice driving car, blinding engine, same engine as an M5. Really, really, really quick car. Lots of lots of tech. Decent image. Not quite got the swagger. I don't think of the S class, but you know. A little bit cheaper. That's that's your that's your trade-off. Next, you've got the Aston Martin DBS. Now that's just a, a straight-up beautiful car. Um, you won't have as much room in the back of one of those as you would in in the S-Class, but an absolutely stunning vehicle. How much do, how much of an issue do we need to make our performance? How much does the performance mean to you when you when you're paying that kind of money? You're paying under 130000 pounds. You're gonna have a quick car. All the cars that, that I've got listed here are going to be quick. I mean, the Mercedes is well over 500 bhp, not 60 in under five seconds. You know, four-ish type seconds. If it was unrestricted, it'd be closer to 200 miles miles an hour. These are, are rapid machines. Whether or not anyone is really going to take any of these machines to the limit seems very unlikely. It seems very unlikely that someone's going to get a hundred grand sports coupe, uh, a luxury coupe at that, and spank it around the track. So how does it need to be around the track? It doesn't need to be any good around the track whatsoever. But it needs to be. A point, a, a good point and square car, and a car they can have a little bit of fun with now and again. So the Aston Martin I threw in there because it's a beautiful looking car and it rides really well, decent performance as well. I, I threw in a curveball here at number three. Uh, my number three choice is one of my personal favourites, and that's the Morgan Aero Super Sports. Bit of a left of field choice, uh, but to me that's got to be it's one of the most beautiful cars in the world, especially the Super Sports Targa. The only drawback is it's only a two-seater, whereas the uh, the S-Class Coupe has got four usable seats. If you're prepared to compromise on the back two seats, which if you've got that kind of money, you probably got another car to carry the kids around in, then that's going to be a really interesting choice. Um, very, 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 very rare. I've never seen one uh, at Super Sports on the road at all. Never seen one even in, in real life. Um, so it's a super, super rare car and uh, a stop and stay car, more than a Mercedes would be. But... I mean, again, power-wise, you've got a, 
uh, an engine just short of 400 bhp uh, uh, created from B by BMW a V8 uh, creates something like 360 bhp you can also get in 390 bhp tune um, a bespoke exterior, bespoke interior not 60 around about 4.5 seconds, top speed on 170 it can shift but man it just looks so beautiful it's like a, a piece of automotive art next up which probably comes to me to be probably one of the nearest rivals to the Bentley is going to have to be, uh, sorry to the, to the Mercedes, is going to have to be the Bentley Continental the Bentley Continental uh, is, a, just a, is a beautiful car it's, it's big, it's luxurious, you can fit four people in it it's got a monster engine, it can do best part 200 mile, miles an hour the only drawback with it is that you, for such an expensive car you seem to see so many of them on the road I mean, footballers have sort of taken taken away the exclusivity of them. Once you see a footballer in it, it just seems to cheapen it. It doesn't it doesn't strike you as they're discerning and they've got good taste. It just strikes you as they're either lot running or they've got a ton of money. So, I do like the car, the, the Bentley. I think it's a gorgeous looking car. The interior is beautiful. They have beautiful interiors and they have massive stonking engines, but they seem to be quite common. So, but you know, in terms of a quality item, that's got to be considered among them. Uh, next, uh, I've put in the Ferrari 599, a beautiful car again. Not exactly in the same ilk as the Mercedes. Again, performance isn't 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 that far away, but it's a bit more of a hard edge, hardcore uh, type vehicle. I know Ferrari do do a four seater type one, but I don't really like it. Um, so the Ferrari 599, that's a really beautiful looking car. Could it do the luxury wafting part? Could it do the non manic part? I'm not sure if it could. Again, if you really want a luxury, then the most the nearest comparison we've got so far to the Mercedes has to be the Bentley. Uh, Aston Martin Rapide. Now I know that's a technically a saloon, I suppose you'd call it, but the um, the styling of the four doors are so beautifully integrated. It just has a silhouette of a, of a coupe. So that's going to give you your four seats. It's going to give you the powerful engine. It's going to give you crazy performance in in the same kind of sphere. But it's going to get you. You're going to be able to fit your family in at the same time. A really, really, really beautiful car. The thing with the Aston Martins to me is that beautiful as they are, they kind of got a dated feel about them. Um, they kind of feel dated to me. It's like they haven't really moved the design language on enough. There are a few makers that can get away with with having the same kind of car over and over again. I mean, the Volkswagen Golf. They've incrementally changed that car and call it a new mark. Ridiculous, but they can still sell it to us and we'll lap it up. Uh, and then of course there is the um, the Porsche 911 they make such incrementally small changes but somehow through some kind of automotive alchemy they manage to make a car which somehow blags us that it's new and kind of feels new but with the, with those few exceptions most car makers can't get away I think with having a car that looks so similar and all the Aston Martins to me look exactly the same it's like a slightly shorter or slightly longer version of exactly the same car but it is a beautiful car it has got four seats it should be in the mix uh, Jaguar F-Type, only a two-seater but very, very pretty. Um, I like it more than the look of the convertible. But yeah, it's only got two seats, but it's a gorgeous, gorgeous looking thing. I mean, again, we're looking at all the, all these vehicles around the 500 bhp mark. The Forbes <coughs> is going to be in a similar kind of category. I think when it comes to cars, you have to start thinking about what does this car say about me? And that's kind of what it is. These are image cars. Not span around or racetrack cars, these are image cars. Cars to pull up and to be seen in. Um, the previous car which was the S-Class replaced, even though it's called an S-Class, is more probably the CL, the, the CL Coupe. Um, again, a big, luxury, elegant looking Coupe. Um, the only one so far I think has really come close to that is the Aston Martin and also the Bentley, but we're still looking. Um, Jaguar XKR. Again, if your budget won't stretch quite to 100 grand, then for the best part, 60 or 1,000, maybe knocking on the door 70,000, you've got the, the XK and the XKR. Beautiful looking car. Again, I don't know what it is with Jaguar. They seem to age really quickly. As soon as they come out, it's almost like they immediately start to age. Still a handsome thing, but design wise, it's starting to creak a little bit for me. Then we have the Miserati Gran Turismo. That's a beautiful looking car. And then that's, a, in the same vein, a big luxury, sporty looking looking coupe, Grand Tourer. I think that's a um, a viable alternative to the Mercedes. A little bit cheaper so you probably get some change out of your hundred grand but that's a, a beautiful car inside and, inside and out. And then finally I thought throwing a bit of a curveball was the Porsche Panamera. 
Some would say it's not really a looker. I actually quite like the the solid look of the Panamera. Some people don't really like the, the rear end part. It looks a bit bloated. I think that, that car is definitely a car to have in certain colours. If you have it in white, it looks awful in white for me. But have it in a, a nice metallic. I don't like the black wheels either. A nice metallic, a decent set of set of 20 inch alloys. And it can look alright. But what you have got is a genuine four seater vehicle. Um, and for £100,000 you can get one with a stonking engine that could pretty much wipe out virtually anything on the road. So that's my look first of all at the S-Class Coupe. Um, really good looking car, really happy that Mercedes brought this out, really like the direction that it's going. But again, uh, feel free to comment, I'd like to, to know what would you do if you had a between, uh, let's keep, keep the budget realistic, if someone gave you a best part of 100 grand, 100 to 120 and you had to buy a new car, I specify a new car because you can get pretty much anything under the sun second hand for that kind of money. But looking at a new car, £120,000, where would your money go if you wanted a big uh, luxury Grand Tourer, something in the vein of the S-Class? So I'd be interested to see your comments below. Right, uh, next up I want to talk about the BMW M4. Obviously formerly uh, called M3, but due to BMW's new naming structure, I think all their coupes are now even numbers, so M2, M4, M6, uh, uh, 2, 4, and 6. Uh, yeah, uh, the arrival of a new M3 slash M4 is always a really big deal. People have so much high expectations about it, based on, on the history, based on how good the first one was. Um, they almost make it such a hard rod for the back that no new one can ever make ever live up to it. But what we have here is a new M4. It's no the big news really is that it's no longer naturally aspirated. It's got a big fat turbo on it, which by all accounts, listening to all the reviews, seems to doesn't seem to harm it that much. They lament the immediate throttle response perhaps, but long story short, it's a lot more powerful and it's a lot more rapid. As um, for example, the the new. Uh, M5, they had a race against in, on Top Gear at Richmond, raced against the old M5, it just left, left it for dust. So we can assume that this new BMW is going to be faster. Now, I've never driven it. A lot of us probably wouldn't have. It's, it's a brand new car and it costs the best part, 50 odd, 50 odd grand. So we have to sort of extrapolate by taking the best of all the different reviews, what they say about it, I mean, and then basically we'll form our own opinion. So there's two main reviews that, I, that I've been commenting on. Uh, we have Steve, Steve Sutcliffe from Autocar. He tested this the M4 against the C63. Now, um, even from let's look at the aesthetic point of view. I can't genuinely comment on what these cars are like to drive because I have never driven either the C63 coupe or the brand new M4. Um, so you kind of have to, by and large, go by what these guys say to a certain point with regards to how it drives. There's some things are empirical. For example, um, its actual performance figures, uh, how fast it accelerates, that's something that's measurable. But all the other things we can give an opinion on. So, for example, ultimately, uh, in Autocar, um, with the test against the M4 against the C63, uh, Steve Sutcliffe ultimately rated the C63, in his opinion, was a little bit better than the M4, and hence trigger all the, all the, the great controversies over it. For me, even from an aesthetic point of view, I have to look at things from a logical point of view and think, okay, for me, an average driver, I've been driving for 25 years, I love driving, uh, I consider myself a decent driver, but I'm not like a, I'm not a race, ex-racing driver like, like Steve, Steve Sutcliffe is, so the stuff he's doing with a car, I couldn't do with a car, you know, the way he's feathering it around the corner, you know, leaving black trails on the road, one, I don't think I could do that, two, where on earth am I going to practice doing that? Unless I get a brand new M4 and take it down to a track, that's that requires living in a different world than the one I I currently inhabit. So, a car's ability to go sideways, that's a whole separate discussion which we may talk about touch on it towards the end. Is the fascination of going sideways? But apart from that, I'm looking at the car in terms of what the both cars look like. These are image cars, a brand new big time coupe. These are image cars and bragging rights cars. So even in terms of what they look like, um. I think the new M4 looks amazing. I'm not keep overly excited about the new 4 Series Coupe. Uh, I think that in its standard form looks a little bit bland, but the way they've muscular the M4 up, it looks it looks amazing. Uh, the the, uh, the the front the, the detailing around around the front spoilers, 
the the, the broadened shoulders at, at the back, the, the the big wheels. They've they've really done a, a good M job in it. The beef, the look up of the look of the car are very well. The interior is a little bit special as well. The previous generation M3, the interior was a little bit disappointing. There was nothing special about it. It seemed box standard 3 Series Coupe. But this one looks a little bit special in the same way that the E36 BMW had like a quite unique Vedar M3 seats. These, the interior of this car looks a little bit special, a little bit different. Generally speaking, even just to compare the looks of the two cars, the C63 Coupe and the M M4, even from looks alone, they look like they're from completely different eras. I know the M4 is brand new, and but the C63 has only been out about three years. It's not like it's it's miles old, but it just looks like it's from a completely different era altogether. Um, from the time they brought out the C63, it just didn't look new. It wasn't a bad, it's not a bad looking car. It's kind of handsome. It's like a, a coupe version of the saloon, which is because it's pretty much what it is. But it it doesn't. It never looked exciting from the time it came out. I mean, for example, when you compare that with the CLK, which was a previous um, car that you kind of replaced. The CLK was, to my eyes, a better looking car than, than the, the C-Series Coupe that replaced it. So for me, design-wise, that was a backward step uh, by Mercedes. Uh, again, the, the gearbox is a little bit little bit behind the step. But what they love, they seem to love uh, the, the C63 for, which is something that I don't know how relevant it is to the average person, is they say it's got a really exploitable chassis. It's, it's ability to be able to go sideways I don't know, we're going to have to touch on this debate towards, towards the end, so I don't want to go too much in and out whether or not going sideways should be the characteristic of a car, but both of these cars go sideways at a drop of a hat, but ultimately he rates the, the C63 over the M3, now the C63 is a fair bit more and it's more powerful, but to me, just looking at two relatively new coupes out on the road, the M4 just, just looks like it's of the now and even slightly of the future. Whereas the C63 actually looks like it's from the, like it's from the past. With regards to how it drives, you've got to take their opinion for it because I've never driven it. But just look what looks wise, I'm not that I'm not that impressed. I mean, I'm naturally biased a little bit towards BMW. The first car I ever fell in love with driving wise, 25 years ago, was my friend had a had a an E30 BMW 325 with the M Tech kit, um, and we we spent a lot of hours really stretching that car's engine out in Wales and that, the sound of that Nat aspirated six cylinder again is a wonderful thing um, I know this isn't a Nat aspirated car anymore but who hates a turbo? You stick a big fat turbo on an ordinary ordinarily uh, powerful engine and what you're going to have, you're going to have a shed load of torque and you're going to have a car that's absolutely rapid so if I get a chance to drive it I don't think I'd be disappointed um, then we had uh, Auto Express tested the, tested the M4 against the RS5 uh, with Owen Middlehall, Mildenhall, if I hope you pronounce the name right. Again, these are these are experienced road car testers and also ex racing drivers as well, so they're going to be able to exploit a car in a way that the average person is not going to be able to exploit it, um, which is an interesting debate in and of itself. But the M4 was put against the RS5 and they basically did it round an actual track this time, and the, the M4 squarely beat it round, round the track. Um, again, are these cars going to spend a lot of their time around the track? Well, they have more chance of going around the track than, say, you know, a Bentley would have, you know. But even so, I think very, very few of these cars are going to find themselves anywhere near a track. These are high-class posemobiles. You know, you take it out, you drive it slowly through the city, you get a bit of an autobahn stretch or a motorway stretch, you put your foot down. These aren't the cars to to really be racing another car back to back around the track. Now I would imagine that there are plenty of rich people out there who intend to buy their cars just for that but I would, I'm would i going to guess, speculate, that there are a small minority. The majority of us, if we ever do manage to get our hands out, spend our hard earned to get our hands on a, on a car like this, it's not going to go around, around the track for the majority of people. Um, I think it's just going to be a very high end status symbol. Um, but nevertheless, or middle Milden Hall uh, and Auto Express tested the M4 against the RS5. The RS5 is a handsome looking looking thing, big, squat, chunky, handsome looking. Starting to look a bit dated now. Then again, it has been has been with us for a good few years now. Um, I like the Audis. Um, they've never been rated for wonderful handling cars, but then again, maybe the criteria they're choosing to to judge how well a car handles is different now. It's not a car to necessarily be going sideways all the time because with quattro four wheel drive sticking to the road. Um, but then, 
I tested it against the M4 around the track and the M4 beat it by about two seconds, which is quite a decent margin in terms of a race. However, if you were to add in mixed weather conditions into that, then it's quite likely that the BMW won't even see which way the Audi went. Right, uh, next I want to talk about the Honda Civic Type R concept. Now, if you're going to do a hot hatch, do a hot hatch. And Honda, really with this concept, if, if the real thing looks anything like this, it's going to blow the competition out of the water, even in terms of its, its drama. Uh, I mean, we're into the era, clearly now, of the Uber hatch. I mean, we've, we've gone past just the, the regular Golf GTI kicking out, you know, 200 bhp. That's, that's standard. But in terms of the Uber hatches, uh, this Honda Type R concept just looks amazing. It looks like a proper a rally car. It, it, the, the, the scoops, uh, the muscularity of it, the way it sits down low, the, the quad exhaust, the big spoilers at the back. If it comes to the market looking anything like this, it's going to be absolutely incredible. Incredible, incredible. Um, uh, Evo have picked this up uh, in, in, their, in their magazine. They're, they're at the Geneva Motor Show looking at the concept. And a few magazines have done that. It just looks in incredible. Now, I'm a big fan. If you're going to have a hot hatch, it's supposed to look like a hot hatch. Um, the new Golf GTI. I mean, a GTI, really? That's just ridiculous. Uh, if you're going to do it, do it. That's what I say. If you're going to do it, do it. So, for example, the 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 Vauxhall Astra, um, they've got their, you know, as now makes no difference, 280 bhp coupe, a very beautiful looking looking car. Um, funnily enough, doesn't doesn't continue to grab me. It's, it's a kind of beauty that you get all of, all of a sudden. You look at it and you think, yeah, it's a good looking car, but it doesn't doesn't draw you in with intrigue. But it's a very beautiful, uh, well done, well designed car with an awful lot of power. Again, if you're going to do it, do it. Um, Ford don't have an Uber hatch at the moment. Um, they had the previously the, the RS. Um, I would imagine they're probably going to kick out an RS, but they don't currently have one. Um, Renault have increasingly hardcore versions of of their of their Megane. Again, that's a core. That's a good shape. It's a core shape. That's that's quite handsome. The Golf, as I mentioned, even the even the 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 R the R version. It. I think they they sort of major on subtlety. But for me, if, if you're going to have a hot hatch, especially an Uber hatch, for me, I'd like it to look like the, the I'd like it to look like this. If Honda bring this car to the market looking anything like this, it's going to be a very, very, very special thing indeed. Uh, the word out now, I don't know what its engine or what kind of power it's going to have when it comes out, but I've heard, I've heard you know you're going to have a VTEC engine, but maybe a turbo on top of that, so power's going to be up to somewhere in the region about 280 bhp. And the rumour is it's going to be the fastest lapping front wheel drive vehicle around the Nürburgring ever. Now if Honda are making claims like that then you know, you know they're going to back it up. So the new Honda uh, Civic Type R concept, again let's hope it's one of those very thinly veiled concept and it comes to the market looking just like this because if it does, mm, that's one chunky mean looking piece of car that I think will have a serious waiting list for it because it looks it looks amazing can't wait to actually see that in real life or maybe even get behind the wheel of one myself uh, also what was coming out this month uh, the Ferrari La Ferrari stupid name but everyone pretty much agrees with that but it's a it's a hyper it's a hyper it's a hyper car and um, just under a thousand bhp and um, kind of semi-hybrid I mean I don't know why. I, I love cars, big car guy. I can't get too excited about hypercars, partly because they seem so extremely separated from anything resembling uh, real life or any life I can imagine fully inhabiting, that I can't get too excited about it. So, you know, a car that's made in such small numbers for the uber, uber, uber rich, it almost, it almost doesn't matter. It, its figures are, have got to be purely statistical because on a road, when you start talking about not 16 in around 3 seconds, top speed of in excess of 200 miles an hour, these aren't figures that can in any way be exploited on the road. So you, you're purely into the domain of, 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 a, of, of a track. And anyone that's rich enough to take a, you know, a car that's... Oh, how much is it? I'm not even sure how much it is. I have to, I have to find out. You know, while we're talking, I'll, I'll, I'll stick how much 
um, how much his car is, but I don't think you're going to get an awful lot of change from half a million pounds. I'm sure it's more than half a million. But, yeah, I mean, to to have a, a car like a car like the La Ferrari, I think you may have to be invited to buy and and then it's just it's just so exclusive. I, I don't know. I've not really got that excited about it because it doesn't resonate in my world. It's a good look, looking looking car. Uh, I can see a need of, need of a hypercar because we're in a hypercar world. You've got the the Bugatti Veyron, which is a little bit longer tooth now, but still the daddy. Uh, Porsche brought out their new uh, mixed hybrid car that's meant to be amazing. Um, uh, Lamborghini have that that crazy one that's done on top gear with all carbon fiber. I mean, do we need a hypercar? Does the world even need a supercar? These aren't cars we need. I'm kind of glad they exist because it's nice to have these things that are extremes. But because it's so far removed from normal life, I can't imagine ever genuinely either see one on the road or or actually getting to drive one. I mean, these these are cars that only the very few uh, are going to get to even see, let alone drive. So. I've not got too excited about that, but there is a car that I think is quite interesting that I commented on, and it's a it's a, uh, I think it was Steve Sutcliffe again did a, a review on this car in auto, in auto auto car, and that's the uh, Volvo V60 Polestar. Now Polestar kind of an interesting um, addition to Volvo. You kind of it's a bit like the AMG to Mercedes or the M division to to BMW or the RS to, to Audi. You got Polestar basically. Who come in and, and basically turn rather mundane Volvos into mentalist supercars, basically. Um, the, they've got the, the Polestar, which looks like a um, you know very handsome car. It's a it's a it's a very handsome car. It's kind of subdued. If you were to take away the bright blue colour that, that this particular one's in, it's quite a a subdued looking car. But then it costs best part of fifty grand. And what was interesting with this is when Steve Sutcliffe was testing it, he didn't seem bowled over by, by it. He seemed to be making excuses for it as he went along. Uh, he's saying, you know, does it handle? Yes, it can handle. Is it quick? It's kind of quick, but not mad quick. And for the kind of money you're talking about, looking at firmly into the equivalent type size, maybe RS, RS4 type money. And if you're going to have a car that goes up against something like an RS4, you can't be, you can't be having excuses for it because that's a gorgeous looking piece of a car and it looks every bit worth its money. The V60 Polestar... For example, this he was saying it's got um, adjustable dampers, but you have to go back to the showroom to get them to adjust the dampers for you. We're in 2014. That's just ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. So you can get adjustable dampers on on a on a 20 odd grand Audi TT. You click you click a button. You can change you can change you can change the ride. Why on the why on a fifty thousand pound Volvo would you what you're gonna go on the journey half through the journey? Ooh, I fancy a a bit more of a sporty ride. Let me just detour from, with my family from a, a trip down to Devon and just find an area of Volvo deal so we can have a little fettle underneath the car. That's ridiculous. I think £50,000 should be to click a button and change whatever suspension you set up you want. It's a handsome car and I'd like it to do well, but I think it's priced ridiculously. I think it needs to be priced in the category it makes it a bargain as opposed to pricing so it goes square up against its competition. Um, T63 uh, Estate, Audi RS, um, RS Estate, I mean, for fifty thousand pounds, I think you need more drama than the V60 Polestar can offer. Uh, all the way through the review, Steve seemed to be making a little bit, of, a little bit of excuses for it. Sort of like, mm, it's kind of good. Like he's trying to convince himself it was, it was an amazing car. And I think you know, to the average person getting in, it would be, it was going to seem stonkingly fast. All the rest of it, but fifty thousand pounds, I think they're pretty much pricing itself out of the market. That's going to have to be for the absolute die-hard Volvo fan and a fairly well-heeled one at, at, at that. Um, so, not overly bowled over by the Volvo V60, V60 Polestar, but by all means, let them know your opinion. Uh, also, you are throw into the comments what um, rapid uh, estate car would you buy for fifty grand? What else is what else is there available? I mean, the, the natural choice seems to be something like an RS an RS4, but what else is there? I can't think of the top of my head. But if you think of any any additional cars that you feel would would better suit. You know, having your fifty thousand pounds and the, the V sixty Polestar, please just leave it in the comments.